the Seme Center in Nashville, Tennessee. It's college basketball on Fox College Sports. The Louisville Cardinals from the Big East, from the Sun Belt, the Hilltoppers of WKU. Paul Sanderford, Dan McLaughlin with you, and welcome to the Seme Center in Nashville, Tennessee. It is a huge test for the Hilltoppers to try to knock off Louisville, one of the top teams in the country and ranked in the top five. Well, this is a transition year for WKU under Coach McDonald, first-year head coach, a Sweet 16 team last year. But the Cardinals, a veteran team, and it is going to be a huge test today for WKU. And, Coach, how about your two players to watch out for this afternoon? Well, I don't think you can talk about Louisville without talking about Smarto Samuels, uh, a beast, 6'9", 260, leading him in scoring and rebounding. Uh, an outstanding player. And then for the toppers, A.J. Slaughter, a young man who had to sit out two games because of a suspension for playing in an unsanctioned summer league and is in, just playing now his third game. He's a real key for the toppers. He has to score big for them to have a chance. Speaking of scoring, if Western Kentucky has a chance in this game, they better score often. They better be shooting it very well today. It's going to be tough in your keys of the game. Well, the three keys, I think, number one is taking care of the ball. Any unforced turnover against U of L ends up in a dunk at the other end. Uh, number two is they have to shoot a high, high percentage and limit Louisville to one shot. If they do those things, it could be a ball game. Should be a lot of fun. The Seme Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Big crowd, well over 10,000. The Cardinals, the Hilltoppers, the opening tip, starting lineups next on FCS. Seme Center in Nashville, Tennessee. And we welcome you back. Paul Sanderford, Dan McLaughlin with you. Louisville taking on WKU. The first of a four-year agreement between the schools to play. And in here in the 2008, played on a neutral site in Nashville, Tennessee. The Cardinals 2-0. Got off to a late start this season. The Hilltoppers are 2-2, two and two, and there's a look at Rick Pitino in his 23rd season as a college head coach. Eighth at Louisville, a record of 523 and 191, one of the best ever in the business of college basketball. On the other side, a young man that grew up idolizing Rick Pitino actually went to his camps. He played at Providence, and we're talking about Ben McDonald. First season at Western Kentucky. He had been an assistant with him previous, but he also was an assistant for Rick Barnes at Texas. And a lot of graduation when you talk about what happened with the Hilltoppers a year ago. Really a transition year for both the players and the head coach. No doubt. The first year is always a transition year. And Western was a Sweet 16 team last year, but Courtney Lee's playing for the Magic. Tyrone Brazelton's playing in the top league in Italy. So this is a real transition year against a veteran Louisville basketball team. Western Kentucky will wear the white uniforms with red trim. The Cardinals of Louisville, the dark uniforms. Samuels, and look at how they line up in this formation for the opening tip. He'll tip it for Louisville. Yeah, Preston Knowles starting uh, for Louisville. That's kind of a surprise. He hadn't started a, a game this year. And the tip is one by the Hilltoppers. This is A.J. Slaughter, who we highlighted in the open, the junior out of Shelbyville, Kentucky. Man-to-man -man starting out this game for Louisville. Well, Coach Patino always likes to play man-to-man -man early. He doesn't go to the 2-3 very much until about mid-December. Down low to Pettigrew there. Tough shot. Karouche, the putback no good, and Louisville pulls it away with the rebound. It was Samuels. Louisville wasting no time. Williams up with it. No good. Slaughter the rebound for the Hilltoppers. Well, Western was in a little bit uh, kind of a man-to-man, -man, but a soft man-to-man -man on that first possession. Karouche out of Memphis, Tennessee, looking for help. Trying to get that ball, and it's knocked out of bounds. Off the hands of Terrence Williams, the senior from Seattle, Washington. He's a good one. Uh, Terrence Williams is a, a great player, very good defender. And, and one of the things that Coach Patino really stresses is active hands. And this Louisville team, uh, if you notice on the ball, they're always very, very active with their hands. Slaughter gets it back. Ten on the shot clock. A little two-man game. Nicely done off the glass. The putback. Oh, yes. Jeremy Evans, the junior. Uh, he skied on that one again. Uh, got a mismatch on the side pick and roll, and uh, even though the shot was missed, he followed it well. Western in there man to man. Uh, again, who can handle the big guy inside? This is Clark, little floater. 
And a whistle and a foul that'll be on the floor. The officials today, Coach, Tim Higgins, Mike Stewart, and John Higgins. Well, a veteran crew, a uh, Big East uh, crew that does a lot of SEC basketball and ACC, uh, you know, some very, uh, very, very competent officials. And, uh, you know, in that situation, uh, my, one of my favorite players, Clark, is at the line. I, I just don't know how Coach Patino kept him at Louisville because I think he could be playing significant minutes in the pros right now. A lot of people thought he would head to the pros. Matter of fact, he was in Houston, and Rick Patino got a phone call as Mr. Clark was going to work out for various NBA teams. He never did the paperwork, but was going to work out for some of these teams, and all of a sudden he's in the hotel getting ready to work out, and he said, forget it. I don't want to do it. This is where Western Kentucky really could have some issues, and they turn the ball over with the pressure of Louisville today. Well, that, that time uh, Louisville was in their matchup full court press, and uh, again, uh, you entered the ball to the corner, uh, the double team came immediately. They cannot turn the ball over. Samuels the inbound. This is McGee. Not a Williams. The big man kicks it out to McGee. McGee for three. Missed it. And a rebound to Pettigrew. Great box out that time by Western Kentucky and limiting Louisville to one shot. Do you anticipate that the Hilltoppers would try to take possessions a little bit longer, try to take the time off the clock? Well, I think that's the one, one way to play it. I think the big thing they're trying to do is stop dribble penetration. They can't allow that. Ooh. This place would have erupted if he would have flushed it. Slaughter kicks it out, but a foul. And that's going to go against Preston Knowles, a sophomore from Winchester, Kentucky. Well, Williams took it hard to the basket that time and uh, got a little bit of piece of the ball, uh, Jeremy Evans. Uh, quick substitution here, DJ Magley coming in for Western Kentucky. Another big body. He started last year for the Hilltoppers. Was foul prone last year and uh, again, uh, took 35 pounds off this summer and really worked on his body. So, uh, you know, again, there's Slaughter for the three. And it's knocked into the hands of Terrence Williams. Like I said, they're going to take a lot of time off the clock. They wasted no time. Well, they're, they're again, a little bit quick shot, uh, I think, for Western. They're going right into the post. There's Samuels, he'll kick it back out, gets it back inside, and he is fouled. You know, Coach Patino is always trying to motivate people, and uh, with Samuels, uh, the only thing after uh, two games that he can say is he's not rebounding. And if Louisville has one shortcoming, this particular Louisville team, it is rebounding. They're not an outstanding rebounding team. I know Rick's really working hard on that. Samuels at the line. He is from Jamaica. Freshman, six foot nine, 255 pounds. McDonald's All-American, Parade All-American last year. He's only been averaging 25 minutes a game in the first two wins, and in those minutes, averaging 21 points. He's now 8 for 11 from the free throw line this year. Now we're tied up at 2 2. Louisville showing the full court pressure now. And Slaughter working with Mendez Valdez, and this is Mendez Valdez with the basketball. May have traveled, no call. Got away with one there. Louisville switching those perimeter screens, and, and again, I, I think uh, that's something that really could bother Western Kentucky. Deep three. Karouche. Mendez Valdez underneath. How about that? Great offensive rebound uh, by Mendez Valdez, and then using the rim to protect it against the trees. Four to two, Western Kentucky. Knowles for three, no. Ball loose in the lane. Mendez Valdez, shortest man on the floor, had it. Knowles, little floater. That's no good, and a whistle and a foul. And that will go against the Hilltoppers. Mendez Valdez, the senior from San Antonio, initially thought he was fouled. Looks to be a pretty good box out here, coach. Well, it was. In fact, as a coach, you really hate to see this. He gets puts it on the floor, gets stripped. But on the shot, watch the box out here by Mendez Valdez. Yeah. Little Four. push. Little push and good call by a veteran official. Western going really hard to the boards uh, in the first uh, three minutes of the ball game. And over there getting an explanation, Big McDonald played collegiately at Providence, a graduate back in 1992. Inside the arc, that's strong, no good. 
And Rick Pitino none too happy about that shot selection. He's frustrated. You can see over there on the sideline. Well, again, uh, Louisville has not shot the ball well this year uh, as a team. They have passed it exceptionally well. Pettigrew. Not a slaughter. Karush spinning, 15 on the shot clock. Tough shot, no good. And three Cardinals around it, and Louisville picks it up. And we're almost uh, four minutes in the game, and then both teams having a hard time scoring right now. Terrence Williams kicks it out to three. That's no good. Chased down by the Hilltoppers. Both teams a little sluggish in this start as far as scoring is concerned. Well, part of the credit has to go to the defense, but uh, Sosa had an open look that time, and he usually knocks that shot down. This is Sally. Slaughter. Little pump fake. Now he'll take it. Tough shot. Hit it. He's a very athletic and uh, point guard. They're really, he's really an off guard having to play the point some this year and uh, can create his own shot, and that's one of the things that... Uh, and that will be an offensive foul. Great job that time defensively by Slaughter of standing in there and really taking the charge in the chest. Terrence Williams whistled for the foul. Good start for WKU against the number three team in the land. Western Kentucky here in Nashville with a 6-2 lead on Fox College Sports. Toppers leading the Cardinals. Number three team in the country, Louisville. They started 0 for 7. And undoubtedly, Ben McDonald, the head coach of WKU, has to be very pleased with this start. Well, he has to be. Again, the rebounding, Western, three offensive rebounds, 9 to 5, and the rebounding advantage in the first four minutes of the game, and only two turnovers, uh, which uh, coach can live with, I'm sure. WKU, 3 for 10 to start this game. The Seme Center in Nashville, Tennessee, neutral floor. It's a four-year deal between the schools, as we mentioned. They'll be in Louisville and Freedom Hall next year. Louisville comes back in their 2-2-1 zone press, that possession. Trying to find help, they find it. Head of the key, no. And the rebound to the Cardinals, Earl Clark. That was Kamadenik shooting the three, and that's one thing that he does really, really well. Samuels picks up the miss from Sosa. They're now 0 for 8. Samuels inside. Big body and a chance at a three-point play for Samardo Samuels, the freshman. Well, we, were, we highlighted Samuels in the open, and he's so strong. He's He's got a junior-senior body for a freshman and uh, 18 years old. And there you see him taking Magley, who's about 240, uh, taking him strong to the hole and finishing. Six to four, WKU. Samuels hits the free throw. He leads Louisville now in scoring. And he has all five of their points. Back to the one, two, one, one, full court pressure. And Western has to take advantage of that by trying to, to attack it to score. Magley sets the pick for Slaughter. Contact, no. Foul called, under 15 on the shot clock. This is Sally. Now to Evans. Slaughter, they step out on him. Good job defensively here by Louisville. Shot clock is down to four. Slaughter, little bump, and that really frustrates a coach. You get the shot clock down to two, and then little touch foul, but it was, it was a foul. He played good defense that whole time. He did a great job here, but if you see, you'll see him put that knee out, and again, the good job by Slaughter of lowering the shoulder, which good players do, uh, and initiating that contact. Anthony Sally inbounds to Slaughter. Evans to Sally. A little hesitation. Great job defensively here by Louisville. Very good job uh, on the switch. And again, they're going to get him for going over the top uh, inside there. But uh, very, very good defense. 
John Smith, who came in off the bench today, usually a starter, uh, you know, got hooked up on the post in a mismatch from the switch. But uh, he's an outstanding defender and, and probably the best outside shooter on the Cardinal team. Carouche will have a seat for WKU. Or excuse me, Carouche back in for WKU. Hilltoppers 2-2 two and two in the young season. Louisville is 2-0. and oh. They were predicted in the preseason number two out of the Big East, and the Big East might have nine teams that goes to uh, the NCAA tournament this year. Well, I think you're you're definitely going to see at least one with a sub 500 Big East record uh, going to the uh, to the Big Dance. And Western Kentucky, uh, with only one starter back from last year's team, or really two with Magley. You know, in a transition year, but still a very talented basketball team that made it to the Sweet 16 last year. Slaughter now with four for WKU. Eight to five, the Hilltoppers. This is Edgar Sosa, the junior from New York. Boy, he is quick, too strong. Caruso the rebound. Got a mismatch there with Evans guarding him. Oh, good luck. Transition, couldn't finish. Oh, great pass. Magley missed the bunny. Sosa driving. Contact, no foul. Western Kentucky pulls it away. Karouche. And it's back and forth here the last 60 seconds. Great defensive job of not fouling then by uh, A.J. Slaughter. Slaughter may have forced that shot. No good. Earl Clark with it. Clark right around Slaughter, the big man. At six foot nine, handling the ball up the floor. How about that, coach? That uh, time, though, he traveled. Going between his legs at 6'9", that's what makes him such a pro prospect. And he brings it every night. It's not once in a while. He, he brings it every night. And I know Coach Patino is really, really proud of uh, the progress he's made. Louisville calls a timeout. Rick Patino not happy with what he has seen so far with 12.55 to go in our first half. And here we are, Coach, seven minutes into this game. and. The number three team in the land with only five points. Well, again, I, I think Western's defense has been very good at not fouling out of control drivers, making them finish and limiting them to one shot. And that's what we talked about in the pregame. If they can, again, shoot a high percentage, not turn it over, not give Louisville second and third opportunities, they have a chance to win the basketball game. And Western doesn't look intimidated at all. Louisville's got to turn up the heat. They're just, uh, again, very lackadaisical early in the ball game. Louisville has won the Billy Minardi Classic, and that classic was started by Rick Pitino and Louisville in honor of his brother-in-law, who uh, died in the uh, attacks September 11th, and to bring awareness to all the folks that have passed away and also to raise some money. The Billy Minardi Classic in Louisville just won that. Great cause, and uh, again, they pounded Sunbelt Foe, South Alabama. Carouche got it blocked. And that was Clark with the block. Here's Clark on the baseline. Kicks it out to Smith. Good look inside and the flush by Terrence Jennings. Jennings is a great looking freshman. Uh, has a body uh, like a junior and a senior. And uh, again, he's going to play significant minutes. Sally looking for help and they get it. It's Slaughter. Now they've got numbers if they hurry up. But WKU will pull it back and set the offense. Well, again, uh, they had three on two and a great job of hustle that time uh, in getting back by Louisville. Jerry Smith, ooh, lost somebody. Nice look. Well, that's a great pass by Sally. Stefan Pettigrew gets his first bucket of the day, and again, someone lost a man there, and it could have been the freshman Jennings. Pettigrew averaging 11 points. That's tipped out of bounds off the hands of Pettigrew, and we'll step aside as we'll take a timeout with 11.46 to go here in our first half of play. Live exclusive coverage of the Cardinals and the Hilltoppers on Fox College Sports. It's 10-7. Paul Sanderford alongside, I'm Dan McLaughlin, as we welcome you back to Nashville, Tennessee. The Samay Center, which is home to the Nashville Predators. You know a little bit about ice hockey and the professional ranks, but tonight, It'll be home to some basketball. Rick Pitino and the Cardinals only shooting 16% here in the first half as they trail their two for the first 12, Coach. Well, I, again, I saw Coach Pitino during that timeout, and uh, I think they've got to attack the rim a little harder against this Western team. Reginald Delk inbounds. Easy two for Earl Clark. Great out-of-bounds play. Too easy, though. Much too easy. See the points in the paint. 
6-4 in favor of the Hilltoppers. And that's McGee whistled for the foul. Well, that's a hand check, and they're going to call that every time. Open hand on the on the ball handler. You can measure up, but then you've got to get that hand off. 2-2-1 two, two, uh, zone press. This is Sally. Guarded tightly by McGee. 2 3 zone for the first time uh, by the Cardinal. Slaughter goes to the right side to Karouche. Slaughter puts it on the floor. Now to the corner. Pettigrew, who can shoot it. He's got eight threes this year to lead the Hilltoppers. And a strong rebound that time by Reginald Delk. Good look. Clark inside, off the glass, yes. And Louisville's starting to pick it up. Yeah, again, going to Clark, uh, last two possessions. And... Near steal that time. Western really doing a good job, though, of uh, handling the 2-2-1. The, the two, two, Louisville's 2-3 has been their bread and butter. A little early for a Coach Patino to go to that. Sally looking for help, gets it in slaughter. The defense and the pressure is picked up. The intensity, Sally. Kicks it to Slaughter. Slaughter, tough shot from the right elbow, and he knocked it down. Well, I think he might have got away with the travel there, but Slaughter can make those shots. They're not bad shots for him, and again, very good at creating his shot. WKU back on top by one. Just over 10 minutes to play in our first half. Here's Earl Clark, the All-American candidate. Little floater from the 6'9". Big man, no good. Gets it back on a tip. Little ball fake. Kick it out to the left side. Smith. Feeds it to the corner, but three seconds in the lane. A rare call that you see these days. Well, I haven't seen one of those in about two years. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about you, Dan, but, uh, you know, Louisville really did a good job. That's Patino basketball, making that extra pass on the perimeter and uh, set up a great look for a three, but caught one of the big guys inside. Pettigrew off the glass. That's a good job by Pettigrew of taking what the defense gave him. They didn't respect his ball handle. He takes it in and hits the jump. Here's Samuels to Clark inside the arc. No good. Slaughter the rebound. And I'm going to tell you who's going to come out of this game real quickly. It's going to be Earl Clark. And <laughs> Patino not happy one bit with his defense on the last possession, nor with that shot. Here's Pettigrew. Elevating. No. Ball is loose, chased down by Clark. Timeout taken by the Louisville Cardinals. Yeah, that's his second time. Well, he doesn't like something that he's seeing out there. There's no question about it. Uh, it's, uh, again, uh, defensively, Louisville not forcing Western out of what they like to do. And uh, WKU has done an excellent job. Pettigrew, Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky, uh, two years ago, uh, had a good freshman year, but has really come into his own at 20 against Southern Illinois uh, last week and uh, came out today. Uh, he and, and uh, Slaughter both look very confident shooting the basketball. 14-11, WKU leading number three in the country, the Louisville Cardinals. Rick Pitino facing a young man in Ben McDonald that uh, grew up, wanted to play for Providence. He did play for him. And then he went to Rick Pitino's camps. <laughs> he said it's a, a thrill to have a chance to face Rick Pitino here today. And his club is on top. Well, and, and there you see Coach Harper defensively. Western comes out in zone, uh, which I think is a very good move from the bench to, uh, just to show a different look. McGee for three. No, Samuels tipped it. Walker has it for WKU. It's tied up. And he keeps possession. Great rebound and showing good strength there. Stripped by McGee. He'll take it all the way in, and he's fouled as he hits the deck. Strong move by McGee. McGee, one of the quicker guards in the Big East, and uh, really, really uh, great hands defensively. Gets the steal here, uses it, protects the body, draws the contact. Uh, looking for an and one there. Sally uh, made the cardinal mistake of trying to cross over in front of a good defender. You cannot use that crossover dribble in front of a, a defender like McGee. 
McGee coach Patino, one of Coach Patino's favorites because uh, defensively he's just always after it. Uh, again, uh, it's very complimentary of him in the offseason because he dropped 20 pounds, came back to camp uh, in the fall in the best shape of his life, Coach Patino says. Ken McDonald certainly has to be happy with the way that this has started, though. Head coach at Western Kentucky. And here's a look at the first year man. Ken was a, an assistant at Western for five years and then with Rick Barnes. Right. And at Texas for uh, five years. And it's a pretty good talent there at Texas. <laughs> Always do. They start with Durant. He had a couple of national players of the year that he had a chance to coach. Had a pretty good guard that's playing Ooh, in the NBA right they? now. The zone really spread out and, and giving Western a tough, tough time. They've got to get into a seam there and play inside out. Sally, a good look. Mendez Valdez in the corner, four on the shot clock. They've got to let it fly. This is Sally with one. Yes, he beat it, and it's a three. Great ball fake there. Shot fake, presence to know that someone was flying at the three-point shooter and then knocking it down. Great play by Sally. And a four-point lead for the Hilltoppers. WKU still in the zone. And a steal. How about this? What a start for the Hilltoppers. Anthony Sally now for Western Kentucky. And lost the handle on it. And we'll take a break. The Hilltoppers from the Sun Belt taking on the Big East Louisville Cardinals. And the Hilltoppers with 7.44 to play have a four point lead here on Fox College Sports. I'm Dan McLaughlin, WKU. The Hilltoppers leading number three in the country, Louisville, here in the first half with 7.44 to play at 17 to 13. And you go back to the last three that Western Kentucky hit, shot clock basically at zero and a huge, huge bucket here, Coach. Well, making the extra pass, there's a shot fake by Mendez Valdez. Walker does a great job of knowing he's not the three-point shooter. Nice shot fake and finished by Sally. Then Sally turns it over, unfortunate turnover. Coach Kim McDonald met him in the middle of the floor uh, as he came off, and that's the turnover that uh, that Western has to avoid. Good stat right now. Uh, Louisville 0 for 6 from the three-point line. They usually shoot 25 a game. 4 for 17, all told in this game, only 24%. Really sluggish here at the onset. Trying to get it inside, and a whistle and a foul underneath. As Samuels was fouled. Yeah, I think Karush got him that time. Nice high-low action uh, uh, versus the zone. Here's a nice pass inside. Uh, no, they got the reach in there. I think, you know, Coach, you would agree that, uh, you know, watching this game, Western Kentucky much more aggressive so far here in the first 10-plus. Uh, well, no doubt. I, I think uh, Western has really taken it at Louisville. In fact, looked very confident on the floor, not intimidated at all by the Cardinals and then and, and again uh, Louisville not playing with the emotion that most Patino teams play with and a substitution for WKU Walker will have a seat Pettigrew comes back in uh, for, for WKU very good in the first half Sally struggling a little bit uh, with the pressure Pettigrew lost the handle got it back here's Slaughter Sally. Good ball movement here by Western Kentucky. Very good ball movement. And again, you got to attack that zone in the middle right there. And uh, Magley. DJ Magley. Nice shot there. Had it from the free throw down. line. He'll take that. And that will be offensive foul. Well, Rick Patino's wondering, did the defender give enough space? Well, he had a full step and a half here. And the, the rule is a step, and, and uh, he had a dribble and a step. And that's uh, a great job defensively there by Sally of taking that charge. And, uh, Coach McDonald really excited about uh, the defense his Hilltoppers are playing. Louisville going back to man-to-man. -to -man. I think that's... Uh, Sally spinning and then stripped away. Louisville, they want to run. Williams inside and count it. Terrence Williams. Fantastic move that time. Strength with the ball, hands, uh, 
able to not only hold on to the ball on this strip, you'll see the player reach. There's the strip and still protect the ball and finish for an and one. Williams averaging seven points a game so far, but nine rebounds, their leading rebounder. Over 1,100 points in his career, 45th all-time in Louisville scoring history, and he misses the free throw. He's now one for three the young season. Western, alley-oop, no, they're going to put it off the glass. That's A.J. Slaughter, and we said in the opening that he had, a, he had to have a big game offensively uh, for the toppers to be successful, and he's really taking it uh, to him right now. And it's a three-point lead for WKU. Sosa to Williams, he'll try the three. Got it, Terrence Williams, the senior from Seattle, Washington. Good player. Great player, and uh, first tie in quite a while, and uh, again, 2-2-1 two -two zone press and a steal. Williams, no good. Pettigrew the rebound. See that explosive quickness on defense by Williams. Back to the zone. This is Slaughter. Back on top to Sally. WKU showing good patience uh, against this zone and trying to screen the zone, get two to play one. And very good job of that. Ten on the shot clock, and Pettigrew hits the three. He can shoot it. He can shoot it. He wasn't. He didn't average 31 points a game in high school because he couldn't shoot it. Uh, <laughs> to be Mr. Basketball in the state, it's, uh, it's quite an achievement. His ninth three already this year to lead the Hilltoppers. Here's Knowles. He'll go to the corner, and Terrence Williams. Williams to Sosa. May have traveled. No call. Sosa gets it back with 15 on the shot clock, and he throws it away, a careless pass. Three on two, nice look, Knowles, no. Williams a rebound. Barouche went up high, uh, the big man just disrupted that shot a bit. Clark thought about the three, to the corner, no good. Barouche pulls it away for WKU, and the pace of this game all of a sudden is picked up. Yeah, good job there by Slaughter, uh, you know, the junior, slowing things down a little bit, getting organized, making sure that Western gets a good shot. Ooh, and a steal. Watch out here, Terrence Williams. Oh, that's fun. It's that quickness and a quick timeout. I think a good timeout by WKU. Ken McDonald takes the timeout, and Terrence Williams has picked it up. WKU leading by one, 22-21. He mentioned for Western Kentucky a sweet 16 appearance last year. They had wins over Drake in that dramatic victory in the first round. Then San Diego made it to the sweet 16. They actually finished the year ranked number 22 in the country, 29 and 7 overall, and 16 and 2 in the Sun Belt East Division. They're predicted to finish third this year. Well, I think they're probably better than that. Uh, and, and again, the Sun Belt East Division. Uh, has uh, Middle Tennessee a veteran team, but uh, WKU uh, a big win at home over Southern Illinois uh, of the Missouri Valley, uh, who, who had just played UCLA uh, and Duke back to back and played uh, Duke very, very well. Uh, Western beats them by nine at home last Wednesday. So uh, this team is improving, and I think they'll take steps each and every week. Of course, WKU coming off a disappointing game, 89 to 61, a loss to Murray State. Uh, very poor game uh, by all standards. Here you see the fact that they don't have a true point guard and uh, Slaughter having to handle the basketball. And Louisville picking up the pressure on that 2 2 1. And a substitution for the Cardinals. Jerry Smith. Junior out of Wisconsin will check in for Preston Knowles. Euros Kamadichi uh, in for Western Kentucky, uh, junior college player out of Allen County Community College. Williams, good luck. And is it a travel? Yes. A travel. And that travel by uh, Samuels and just the uh, third turnover for Louisville here in the first half. Kamadichi. Ginnich is, is an outstanding uh, three-point shooter against Houston in the opening game for the Hilltoppers. Uh, he had four threes, and uh, so again, against Louisville's zone, I think that's why you're seeing the in, and then Matt Mareska making his first appearance for the Hilltoppers. Mareska is senior out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is Sally. 
across the timeline, takes it to the middle of the floor. Wow, that is a deep three and a foul. So Western Kentucky and A.J. Slaughter, they head to the line to shoot three, and the fans on the Louisville sideline can't believe it. Well, Jerry Smith really went after this shot, and uh, Slaughter shot an NBA three there, and his momentum after the, the shot is released carries him into Slaughter, and uh, he's getting rewarded with uh, three shots. So you don't see that very often. Uh, well, you sure don't. And Slaughter has struggled from the free throw line in the first four games, only shooting 53%. And he's a much better shooter than that. Uh, I think, again, that's a, a confidence issue with uh, Slaughter. And uh, again, uh, he works at it very hard. He shot uh, almost 80% last year as a uh, sophomore. So he's a much better free throw shooter than he's shooting. Eight points for Slaughter. WKU a one point lead with 404 to go in the first here on Fox College Sports. One of two now. The substitution for the Cardinals is Will Scott, a senior out of New York, will check in. Scott, an outstanding outside shooter, and again, uh, Louisville with only uh, one three so far in the first half. And Western's been zoned now for almost uh, six minutes. Two for three for A.J. Slutter. A little token pressure here by Western. This is Terrence Williams to Scott. WKU still in the zone. Ooh, and a foul on Sally. That was close there, and again, uh, got a little bit of the hand and arm, and so strong. Uh, Williams uh, got a dribble penetrate with that ball. Can't make that perimeter pass without a ball fit. 24 21 you're watching college basketball on Fox College Sports WKU on top. Paul Sanderford alongside I'm Dan McLaughlin number three in the country the Louisville Cardinals being tested here in Nashville Tennessee Same Center neutral floor to take on WKU Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky and I think if you look at the stats coach a little bit surprising Louisville number one trailing in this game only shooting 32 percent you know they're going to force turnovers but they themselves have turned it over seven times. Well I think uh, Ken McDonald is probably really happy with the eight turnovers that uh, the toppers have uh, thus far in the game and uh, Louisville one for eight from the three point line and uh, again I think that's why, why you see Scott in the game and uh, Samardo hadn't been the uh, factor Samuels that he's been in the other games. Clark now with six points. He's at the line. There's a look at Ken McDonald. Lose five seniors from last year's team that went to the Sweet 16, including first round pick Courtney Lee, outstanding player. Rick Patino, a lot of people feel that this may be his best that he's had at Louisville. And he had a team that went to uh, the Final Four in St. Louis a few years ago. They need help. Five second call, don't get it. That was close too. Again, Moreska's got to be more aggressive. Here you see Slaughter trying to create. Slaughter's had a real nice first half. He has. He's uh, taken maybe one questionable shot, but really knows where he is on the floor. Sally, no good. The shot clock was at two, and the rebound to Earl Clark. Here's Scott. Clark penetrating. Now to Terrence Williams. Scott for three, a little strong. No good. And a strong rebound inside by Western Kentucky. One of your keys was, hey, as Sally spins out of control, offensive foul. But one of the keys that you talked about, second chance opportunities for Louisville. I'll tell you what, the Hilltoppers have done a heck of a job boxing out and getting rebounds. Well, and that's what you have to do against a team as athletic as, uh, as the University of Louisville. Uh, again, very active hands there. Great job of standing in and taking this charge. Spin dribble. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. Scott taking the charge, and that gets Coach Patino up and encouraged. Hilltoppers lead it by two. Louisville struggled a little bit with this zone, and uh, again, uh, a lot of that comes from not making threes. Terrence Williams cross court pass. Three is up, and they missed everything. My goodness. They are really struggling, as that's now one for ten from behind the arc now for Louisville here in the first half. 
Slaughter. Mendez Valdez. A little mismatch with Samuels. He takes advantage. Put back, no. Samuels, the rebound. They're switching all the screens, and uh, again, Mendez Valdez recognized that. Partially blocked by Slaughter. There. Williams may have lost it on the way up. And we have two minutes to go here in our first half. Western Kentucky and Louisville on Fox College Sports. No good. Rebound Terrence Williams. That was Karush. Karush, a good shooter, a good mid-range game. Wide open three now. Clark hits it. Earl Clark. Former McDonald's All-American. He's on the wooden watch list. He's had eight consecutive games in double figures. First time Western's trailed in quite a while. 25-24. Uh, that time, a good job by Louisville of overloading a side and getting a wide open shot. Got to get Slaughter involved this time. Mendez Valdez, three, no. Carouche had a hand on it, stepped out of bounds, and Louisville leading now 25 24 with 113 to go here in the first half. I think Coach McDonald would like to have that one back. Absolutely. Uh, Mendez Valdez a little bit early in the shot clock and uh, forced that three. Uh, he's an outstanding three point shooter, but uh, again, you can't take that first shot uh, with 15 or 17 seconds left on the shot clock. There's Preston Knowles who's back in the game for the Cardinals. Over to Scott. Zone defense here by Western Kentucky. Williams, Scott for three. Yes. That's why he's out there. He's an outstanding shooter. Missed the first one. Great offensive uh, possession by the Cardinals. Louisville with their biggest lead at four. And their fans making some noise here in Nashville, Tennessee. Under a minute to go in our first half. A difference of 16 seconds from the shot clock and the game clock. Hilltoppers would love a bucket before the half here. Mendez Valdez in the lane. Now to Magley. Magley leans in. Contact, no. And that'll be a foul underneath as Karush picked up the offensive board. I've been very impressed with uh, Karush just going to the offensive glass hard. He got a hand on the last rebound. That time he got the offensive rebound. Louisville didn't put a body on him, and he's going to be rewarded with two free throws. Sergio Karush of Memphis, Tennessee. Only shooting 57% from the line, but he hits the free throw. He has three years left. He only went one year to the junior college at Awamba Junior College in Mississippi, so he's going to have uh, three years with the Hilltoppers. Here you see the coaches talking to Mendez Valdez on the sideline about that shot selection. That's no good. One for two from the line. Terrence Williams with the rebound. And Louisville will have the chance to play for the final shot here in our first half. Ten to go. Sosa to the corner. Too strong. They've got time. Two seconds to go. They'll pull up for three. You bet. He hit it. He hit it. And we're tied up at 28 at the half. What a great job there. Good rebound. Knowing what how much time was left on the clock and pulling up from three and draining. A.J. Slaughter with a tremendous first half. Slaughter a huge first half for the Hilltoppers. Number three in the land getting a test this afternoon. Rick Patino and the Cardinals. Tied up at 28 against WKU. Stats, highlights, special guests coming up. Stay with us. The Bluegrass Showdown here in Nashville, Tennessee. And another look as they just beat the clock. Well, again, good good awareness of the amount of time on the clock. There you see the red light come on. So uh, Western uh, escaping there after leading the entire first half uh, with a tie. So he beats the clock. The Same Center, neutral floor between these two teams and a good one. After one half a play, the Cardinals 28, the Hilltoppers 28. Stay with us. Stats and highlights coming up at the half. Paul Sanderford, Dan McLaughlin with you. Welcome back to the Samay Center in Nashville, Tennessee. 
And we're tied up at 28 after 20 minutes of play. The number three team in the land, the Louisville Cardinals, 28, the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky, 28. No doubt about it, Coach. Entertaining first half and a first half that was primarily led by uh, WKU. Well, I thought they controlled tempo the entire first half. I think Louisville turned up the heat a little bit with the pressure in the, in the zone press and got a couple of turnovers and easy baskets. But uh, an outstanding first half. If you're Coach Ken McDonald, you go into halftime, uh, the kids have confidence now. If you're Rick Patino, you're talking about defensive intensity and keeping Western off the offensive glass. And uh, again, the first five minutes of the second half, I think, are really a key for Western Kentucky. Another key, too, certainly for Louisville, trying to stop A.J. Slaughter, who had that big three at the end of the half. And he really, he really had a good first half for the uh, Hilltoppers. Well, one of our uh, keys going in, and, and I think I said, is that they have to have a big offensive game out of uh, A.J. Slaughter, and he gave him that with 13 first half points. Uh, and uh, again, the other thing that we talked about early was uh, being able to compete on the boards, and Western did a very, very good job of boxing out in the first half. So we're tied up. It's 28 all at the half. Number three, the Cardinals of Louisville, the Hilltoppers of WKU. A special guest, Dr. Seawood Selig, the athletic director, the Hilltoppers, up next. Samay Center in Nashville, Tennessee, entertaining first half as we are tied up at 28, number three in the land, getting a test against WKU, the Hilltoppers. It's tied up after 20 minutes, 28 all. Dr. Seawood Selig is the athletic director at Western Kentucky, WKU. And first of all, I guess uh, when you look at the first half, you have to be awfully pleased. It's like we drew it up this way or something. <laughs> no, we're very, very pleased. How about the championship effort? And I know this is something, almost a theme that you talk about with your department. Right, it's kind of a motto that we have at WKU. We want to put our student athletes and our coaches in a position to win championships. That's our ultimate goal. Uh, we've won 13 of the last 22 team championships in the Sun Belt Conference, including three out of the first four this fall. So we're off to another great start and very pleased with the results we're getting from our student athletes and our coaches. Besides, though, what happens on the field, what's very important is that they are true student athletes. And I know you really focus on your kids getting in the classroom. We're doing exceptionally well in the classroom as well. We've led the Sun Belt Conference in 3.0s or better among all of our student athletes for the last four years. So it, it's really rewarding when you get the type of performance on the field, but then when you get it also in the classroom at an even higher level, uh, that's equally rewarding. How about uh, the facilities? Everybody wants to know about upgrading facilities for all kinds of sports. Where are you at right now with that? Well, prospective student athletes buy with their eyes, and you have to have the right. best facilities you can possibly put together to recruit the best athletes you can possibly recruit. So we've been doing a very good job. Our basketball arena is a $35 million renovation. We just put about $50 million into our football stadium. We're not after the biggest or the newest, but we want to have the nicest on-campus facilities in America. And I feel with what we've done with our basketball and our football, we've also renovated a track facility for $2.5 million, brand new baseball complex, soccer, softball. Uh, all of our student athletes are being supported at a very high level from a facility standpoint we we'll talk a little bit too about the, this series this is the first of four years you hook up with Rick Pitino in Louisville uh, this must be a lot of fun for your fans to have a chance to do this it really is when you think about the state of Kentucky and the, 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 the level of basketball that's being played year in and year out for WKU and Louisville to have a four-year series we play here in Nashville Tennessee for the first game we go to Freedom Hall next year for the second Louisville comes to Diddle Arena the third of our fourth year of the series and then we return to the new arena downtown Louisville on our fourth year so we're excited about it we know it's a series that our fans both WKU and Louisville can get excited about as well. Final question, Ken McDonald in his first season, uh, tell us about your expectations for him off to a, a two and two start so far. We're very, very pleased to have Ken McDonald join our staff. Obviously, he comes from a great pedigree, coaching with Rick Barnes at Texas, played for Rick at Providence. He's been with Dennis Felton when Dennis was at WKU and won three consecutive Sun Belt championships and went to three consecutive NCAA tournaments. So he's seen it at a high level He's also seen it done well at WKU, so we really feel like he can recruit outstanding student athletes and continue the tradition of excellence that WKU basketball represents. Thanks for the visit, and uh, relax, have some fun in that second half. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we will have fun. You got it. Dr. Seawood Selig, the athletic director at WKU. It's tied up at 28. We're at the half here on Fox College Sports.
Back in Nashville, Tennessee, the Cardinals 28, the Hilltoppers of WKU 28. Good early season test for Rick Pitino's club. Western Kentucky, a record of two and two, the young season. So they're facing a team right now, coach, that has only played two games in Louisville. Both those have been at home. And so first road test, and they are being tested here today. Well, they really are. Uh, again, the first time you go on the road, it's a little different. Uh, there you see Williams taking it hard to the hole. Um, Western did a very, very good job. A.J. Slaughter had an outstanding first half uh, shooting the basketball. There you see him coming off the screen. Uh, uh, they disrupted Louisville a little bit with the zone, but uh, U of L uh, is going to have an outstanding season. This is an outstanding basketball team, and uh, as we said before, uh, Slaughter did some some great things. There's a the little finger roll. I think that's a Iverson shot. Uh, <laughs> I think he emulated uh, Iverson on that one. But uh, outstanding first half of rebounding and limiting Louisville to one shot, and I'm sure Coach Patino is preaching about that right now. Big crowd on hand. It's halftime. We've got well over 10,000 here in Nashville. 28 all. Look at the stats when we come back as you're watching the Cardinals and the Hilltoppers on Fox College Sports. There's a look at Rick Pitino addressing his club as we get you set for the start of the second half. And for Rick Pitino, what stood out for you in that first half for the Cardinals? Well, I think, again, uh, their overall pressure, uh, you know, trying to wear the toppers down. And, and I'm sure the first five minutes, they're going to really turn up the heat. They have outstanding depth. Uh, I'm sure Coach Patino was really on them about, you know, attacking Western, uh, attacking the basket. So their pressure, uh, I think, will be much more intense at the start of the second half. Western Kentucky holds a 38-33 advantage in this series, which may surprise some, but Cardinals have won 17 of the last 19 games. Uh, the Cardinals have dominated the series uh, in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, but uh, early Western did uh, have quite a bit of success. Western back to their man-to-man -to, -man to open the second half. Louisville has the first possession of the second half. McGee, alley-oop, trying to hook up with Terrence Williams off his fingertips and out of bounds. Hilltoppers read that play well. Yeah, they really did. Uh, Jeremy Evans got off and helped. Uh, and again, that was a halftime play drawn up by Coach Patino. Evans to Slaughter. Mendez Valdez out on the floor as well. Global in the zone, the two-three zone to open the second half. Pettigrew is there along with Jeremy Evans. This is Karush. Down to seven on the shot clock. Great defense that time by Knowles. Austin Knowles, really outstanding defense. Can Slaughter beat the clock again? He does, but it's no good. Knowles, the rebound. His quickness as he spins out of trouble. Williams, we saw him hit the three in the first. This one rattles out. Good box out that time by Mendez Valdez and Evans, and, and that's uh, a very good shot for Williams there. Louisville now just three for 14 behind the arc, and whistle for the foul was Preston Knowles. Well, again, uh, Slaughter, very good there. I don't know who the foul was on there. I think uh, WKU might have gotten one. Knowles down low, really working hard. Global man to man, uh, this possession. Mendez Valdez for WKU to Evans. Trying to hand it off to Slaughter, a steal by Terrence Williams. Williams leaning in off the glass. Looked like a travel to me that you time, bet. too, but uh, again, nice job of being under control by Williams. The pressure, they're picking up the pressure. Uh, really good job that time. Uh, Smith of pressuring the basketball. Louisville leads it by two, 30-28, just underway here in the second half. Well, the officials talking to Coach Ken McDonald there. Jeremy Evans, very quiet first half, uh, had the first tip-in basket, a tip-in dunk, and you hadn't heard from him since then. Mendez Valdez with the basketball, picks up his dribble, finds help in Pettigrew. Western Kentucky shot just about 40% in that first half. Canoose hits the 15-footer. That's Carusha's game, is, is mid-range jumpers, and a very good job there on the screen of taking advantage and taking it to the hole. 
Sergio Carouche, young man from Memphis. Mendez Valdez hit it out of bounds. Right to Rick Pitino. <laughs> Coach Pitino still got those reflexes. He still plays every day uh, at noon with his coaches, and they don't beat him either because they like their job. <laughs> They're smart. That's an easy call. A foul on A.J. Slaughter going for the steal. Well, that's A.J.'s second foul, and again, they have to keep him out of foul trouble. McGee and uh, and Noel starting at the guards positions instead of Sosa and Smith today, and uh, that's a little bit of a surprise, but uh, Preston Knowles uh, from Clark County High School in Kentucky, an outstanding prep career. Clark inside, and he is fouled. That'll go against Jeremy Evans, the junior, out of CrossFit, Arkansas. That's a man taking it to the hole there. Good face up there, fake and taking it hard. He's a former McDonald's All-American at the line. Earl Clark, Jr. out of Plainfield, New Jersey. He's the first Louisville player into double figures now with 10 points. And that's now nine consecutive games for Clark into double figures. Hit them both. Four. And it's a two-point lead. A little different pressure here, face guarding on the inbounds, trying to speed the tempo up a little bit. Slaughter. He's the one that has handled the pressure fairly well for WKU. Mendez Valdez thought about shooting it. Little floater in the lane. Yes! <laughs> Tied up again. Western doing an outstanding job of shot faking, and when they sell at the shooters, one of Coach Patino's big things is uh, not giving up open threes, and, and his team does a great job of closing out on shooters. 32 all, 17, 21 to go. Samuels has been relatively quiet. Pettigrew at 6'5", fighting every, uh, every inch in there. And that'll go against WKU. That's Karouche whistled for the foul. A little too aggressive there with the body. You can see the officials here in the second half. A couple of the hand checks, you know, trying to clean it up a little bit, set the precedent here in the second half. So they don't have to blow the whistle at the end. Exactly. Clark may have traveled. And oh. it's going to be a push against WKU. And look at Ken McDonald on that far sideline. Can't believe it. Mr. Higgins saw that, but he saw it a bit late. <laughs> he had to either call traveling or a foul there. Samuels inbounds. It comes to McGee. Clark trying to feed it to Samuels, and it's tipped away. WKU with the basketball, but a foul, and that's going to go against Knowles. Got him for the reach from behind, trying to back tip that time. See the replay there, quite a bit of contact. Nice job by Pettigrew. Uh, he's really done a good job uh, so far in the in the ball game uh, on Samuels, who's an outstanding player. Break the pressure. Slaughter. Pettigrew elevates. In and out, no good. Slaughter, the easy two. No one had a body on him. Right. Again, uh, Going to the offensive glass and cleaning that up. Pettigrew, very nice uh, jump shot there. And uh, Slaughter just in the right place at the right time. Great instincts uh, for going to the ball. This is McGee, Andre McGee. Not at Terrence Williams. Back to McGee and near steal. Good luck, Samuels inside. Can't finish, gets his own rebound and an easy two. Well, I figured Big body. Yeah, great. Uh, and great hands, too. Uh, again, I don't think he's getting enough touches. Uh, Louisville face guarding out of there, 2-2-1, two, two, to try to create tempo a little bit. I think they want a much faster pace than we had in the first half. Magley setting the pick for Slaughter. To the corner he goes. Mendez Valdez. Put it on the floor, trying to get it back to his point guard. Ball is loose. It's tied up, no whistle. Finally, they get the whistle. Williams trying to get a timeout, but it's a jump ball, and it should stay with WKU. Well, you got, as coaches, you got to be really pleased. Four bodies on the floor after that loose ball, and uh, uh, again, uh, first four minutes of the second half, Western hanging around. Tied up at 34. 
15 48 to go as we step aside here on Fox College Sports. There's a look at Ken McDonald. Last time they had a win against a top five team was back in 2001 for Western Kentucky when they beat Kentucky. The Rupp Arena, well, trying to do it here today against number three in the land. And they have led for the better part of this game with 15.48 to play. It's tied up at 34. Entertaining ball game. Very entertaining and Louisville in their zone. Two, three. Little pressure. On the basketball. A.J. Slaughter had it, leading score in the game. Three on the shot clock, another block. And that time the block by Clark. McGee, no one took him. Pettigrew elevates for the rebound. And wide open shot for McGee, just didn't put it down. They are three for 15 behind the arc today. And another turnover, this time by Karouche. Williams, oh, boy, he is strong, and he can elevate in a hurry. And Mr. Williams will head to the line. That's Terrence Williams. He's on the wooden watch list as one of the top 50 players in the country. Well, Mendez Valdez gives up a middle drive there. Nobody steps over to help, and uh, he's taking it for the dunk. A good, strong move by Williams. But Clark, uh, my man Clark down at the other end, uh, made an outstanding defensive play. He's the guy that contested the first jump shot Carouche had and then caused the turnover on the last one. So very active hands by Louisville, much more aggressive uh, than in the first half. Terrence Williams now in double figures for the Cardinals. He has 10. Leading score for Louisville is Earl Clark with 11. Missed that one. Pettigrew picks up the miss. This is something new that Coach Patino's worked on is uh, pressing out of, even off on a miss. Yeah, you don't see throw. that. And uh, but with the 2 2 1, uh, make or miss uh, showing that to us. He done that in his past. Sally to Pettigrew. Nice look. Very good ball fake by Sally and Pettigrew making the jumper at the free throw line. WKU leads it by one and a timeout taken by Rick Pitino and the Cardinals. Hilltoppers leading 36 35 with just under 15 minutes to play. A big time test early season for number three in the land on FCS. Louisville last season at 27 wins. They went to the Elite Eight. Without question, they miss David Padgett, who was an outstanding player a season ago for the Cardinals, but they have some big time players returning, and a lot of folks looking at Rick Patino and the Cardinals being a, a favorite to get to the Final Four again this season. Well, I think they have an outstanding team, a veteran basketball team. Uh, Sosa uh, is, I think, a, a big key for Louisville. You know, uh, Coach Patino says he's splitting point guard duties between he uh, and Andre McGee. Yeah, and Andre McGee. And I think to be the best they can be, uh, that you've got to, to really go with one of those guys. And uh, uh, they're both outstanding players, but one of them has to accept the six band role. Well, at this point, you know, Louisville has had decent looks. They're just not shooting the ball that well. And at times, they, they look to be out of sync. Well, I think they are. I think Western's playing good defense, but at the same time, Louisville, when they get an open look, it seems like it's a little bit too quick in the shot clock. I'm sure Coach Patino uh, stressed inside out, as he always does, and, and you make threes by throwing the ball in the post and kicking it out, and most of the threes they've taken today have come off the initial first pass or from the outside, not going inside out. And shooting under 40% in this game. Threes have been a problem, no doubt. Smith kicks it to Sosa. Five on the shot clock. Clark elevates, great look to Samuels inside. That's Samuels, only a fourth field goal attempt. That's it. Well, he hasn't touched the ball very much. Here you see uh, Magley having to come across to help on the, on the drive or, or helping a little bit too quick. And, then picking up the foul. So Samuels goes to the free throw line, but that young man averaging 21 points has got to get more than four shots, and uh, I'm sure Coach Patino stresses that. First one is good. Samuels from Jamaica, six foot nine, 255 pounds. 
again, that's an 18-year-old freshman we're talking about. Jamardo Samuels. And just turned 18. I looked at his birthday, and I thought I was seeing a misprint. <laughs> at 15 points in his debut. He was shaving at 13. The Big East Rookie of the Week. And it's 37-36 Louisville. Here's the run and jump, full court matchup. Sally Pettigrew. Now they'll reset the offense. Good job to break the pressure. But still, you look up, Coach, and with the pressure of Louisville, it takes 10, 15 seconds before you get into your set. Slaughter hits the three. Great set play there. Double screen for Slaughter coming off the curl and pulling it up and uh, hitting it. And again, uh, A.J. Slaughter having a big-time game today. He's from Shelby County, just outside of Louisville. In fact, he probably has shot jumpers uh, from, from his backyard to Louisville. The strip that time by Slaughter. The Samuels brought it down low. Again, they got, they're doubling him down there, and uh, Walker did a nice job that time also. Here's Slaughter. Pettigrew at the head of the key. Sally, a little hesitation, now takes it in. Looking for help, 15 on the shot clock. Sally. Mendez Valdez wanted it. Sally with 10 on the shot clock. Got it blocked, but that'll be goaltending. I don't know about that one. Uh, I'm sure the Western Kentucky folks wanted that, but uh, Clark will look at it on the replay here. That's close. And their fans, the Hilltoppers, on their feet. Trying to pull off one of the biggest upsets of the young season. They lead it by four with 13 minutes to play. They escaped that first five minutes of the game, which they had to do. This is McGee. Penetrates, kicks it out. Terrence Williams. No good. The rebound by Slaughter, who's had a monster day. He has. He's done it all for, for WKU. And I've been really impressed today with, uh, with, the, with the play of Sally. You know, he's handled the pressure pretty well. He's made a couple of shots. Pettigrew is the guy that, that can really go off here, too. Slaughter again. Too strong. Pettigrew, though, the offensive board. And a fresh 35 for WKU. Louisville back to the man-to-man. -man. Mendez Valdez off the glass. No. Clark the rebound. This place was ready to erupt. It was. It was uh, he had a pretty good look at it then. And Terrence Williams is fouled on the drive near the free throw line. And that goes against Anthony Sally. Louisville already in the one and one with 12.09 to go in the ball game. And, and that could be a big uh, factor uh, as we, we have a very close basketball game. Williams crossed over that time and Sally reached. And uh, I think you're going to see Sally come out and Karush come back in for WKU. So Karush in, Sally out. WKU's been able to maintain the tempo they want. They've dictated that, and Louisville uh, has turned up the heat uh, here in the second half, but Western breaking the press and not taking bad shots, running that shot clock down below 10 on almost every possession. 18 on the day for A.J. Slaughter of WKU. That's no good. Walker the rebound. They have not shot free throws all that well either as Louisville today. I would assume, Coach, as you well know, you're ranked number three in the country. You just saw a team lose to Murray State. You're thinking, all right, walk in the park. And then they throw the ball up, and you start seeing WKU. Hey, they've got athletes on the other side, too. They're pretty darn good. We'll take a quick time out here. We'll talk about it when we come back as Western Kentucky trying to pull off a huge upset. That one was hit out of bounds. It's 41-38 with 11.53 to play. Here on Fox College Sports, can they do it? Can they pull off this upset? Just under 12 minutes to find out. Well, there's so many things to look at in this ball game this afternoon, but the fact is Louisville has not shot well. They shot 32% the first half. They are under 30% here in the second half for the game at 31%. Conversely, you look at WKU, 
sh uh, shooting 55% here in the second half. A lot of that to do with uh, A.J. Slaughter. Slaughter, 18 points, which is a game high on 7 of 11 from the floor. Well, and he's really uh, taking it over. But Louisville can't set their press up if they can't score, and that's really been a problem for, for them. And that'll be a hold against the Cardinals. Whistle for the foul was Jerry Smith. He's a guy that can really get Louisville going uh, both ends of the floor, but uh, he's got the task of guarding A.J. Slaughter right now. And Slaughter backs up near half court. Louisville in the man-to-man. -man. Well, good defense here by Smith on Slaughter. Now it's Walker back to Slaughter. Trying to find a pick, any kind of room. Slaughter elevates. That's no good. The tip still bouncing around. Caruso has it inside, and he's fouled. And he'll shoot two. Great offensive rebounding job there by Western Kentucky. Caruso uh, going hard to the boards. Walker keeping the ball alive. Here you see the shot. Good shot there, in and out. Caruso tips it to Walker. Walker back. They're battling out there, and, and that's great to see. Sergio Carouche at the line. Great battle, as you see. First one is good. Lead is extended. Back to four. That's the eighth offensive rebound so far for Western Kentucky in this game, and Louisville only has five, and they have a decided size advantage. Carouche with four points. Coach, how about this? The lead is five, and that's the biggest lead for either side of the afternoon. Well, we picked a good afternoon to have a basketball game. 43-38 <laughs> with just over 11 minutes to play. Western Kentucky trying to pull off a monumental upset early on. And a foul, and that's going to go against Sergio Carouche as he was guarding Terrence Williams. Yeah, again, they got him for the hole there going off the back screen. And uh, but, uh, that, he's a guy that Western really needs on the floor. They're going to have to get him out right now, and they're going to bring in Jerry, Jeremy Evans. One of the reasons they've had some success uh, uh, against Dan against this press is they've been playing four guards most of the afternoon. This is really one of the first times uh, you see uh, two post players on the floor. Williams at the line. Now three for six. And as a team, Louisville 14 for 21 from the free throw line today. Three pointers have been a cause of concern. Of course, Louisville, if they're hot and they're hitting threes, it could be a blowout. But today, just three for 16. Well, and you have to credit uh, WKU's defense. Here, Louisville, it's going to come with all out pressure. Well, they don't make the free throws. Again, so. that's what you're talking about. If you don't make free throws or don't make baskets, you can't set up the press. Yeah. They, they pressed 2 2 1 out of that, but I'm sure that Coach Patino was going to try to go full court, try to speed up the tempo again. Here's Slaughter. Oh, and Caruso sent a bullet over to Mendez Valdez, and he couldn't hold on. Coach McDonald again. Uh, Mendez Valdez struggled a little bit today, and uh, again, that was an unforced turnover, but at least uh, one that uh, didn't result in a layup. 43-39, WKU. Williams open for three. No, that won't fall. And Western Kentucky again, great job of blocking out inside. That was as good a block. That was a teaching uh, take there on the block out. And then Slaughter picks up the ball off the ground. Let me get a reach there by Gary Smith. Yep. I'll tell you what, Coach. Western Kentucky from the opening tip, blocking out inside has been outstanding. Give them credit defensively, but also rebounding. Not a lot of second chance opportunities for Louisville today. Well, I think that was an important key coming in, and they have done an outstanding job in boxing out, and then their guards are going in. They're gang rebounding. Not only boxing out, but sending the guards in to pick up those loose balls. Here's Slaughter. Fires it out to Karouche. Look, just over 10 minutes to go. Field goal percentage there kind of tells the tale, 31%. Evans got it blocked, and Williams is fouled. But again, there was Pettigrew going to the offensive glass. That's a foul you can live with as a coach. Uh, 
overpowered there a little bit by Samuels was Evans but uh, just going for the basketball and as a coach you like to see that aggressiveness so Williams who's just three for seven see the foul there once again back to the line for the Cardinals and again you know they want to make these free throws so that they can really set up the full court pressure Terrence is a much better uh, free throw shooter than he shot today on his career. Almost 76% free throw shooter. 13 points on the afternoon. Strong here, no good. Pettigrew picks up the miss, and they cannot set up the pressure the way that they'd like. Pettigrew easily across the timeline and a whistle away from the ball. And that's going to be a timeout taken by WKU after the three was made. <laughs> Well, as a coach, that's one of those ones that you just, uh, Dan, look at yourself in the mirror and say, why did I do that? <laughs> but. Well, we had a chance to visit with the head coach at WKU, Ken McDonald, and he talked about his team and where the focus lies. Well, I don't know if it, it's about me, you know, coaching in this, this opportunity. I think it's more. Uh, this team, uh, a young team, and obviously a, a, a different system um, coming in with a different coaching staff. And we're still trying to find our identity. We've made some steps, especially in the last game, uh, with where we want to be as a program. And this is just another step forward with obviously just an incredible team in front of us. Um, but opportunity, that's, that's what we talked about a lot with our team uh, this week. Well, what a statement game this would be if Ken McDonald can win it. Slaughter, no. Ball loose, the putback, yes, for Western Kentucky. Jeremy Evans with another offensive rebound. And again, we talked about Louisville's lack of rebound, and Coach Patino has alluded to that on several occasions. And again, uh, that's an inside-out three, but they, it doesn't go. Great box out again. Pettigrew is a man in there today. Here's Slaughter for Western Kentucky. Open for three. No. Clark picked up the miss. It's a five point lead with under nine and a half to go. McGee. Louisville has been out of sync basically from the opening tip. Well, they really have offensively. And here you see Western sinking defensively, uh, trying to, to stop the drive. Oh, great look by McGee and the block. Oh, goodness, what a block. And Samuels hit the deck, and he's hurt. Well, you hate to see that, but great job of coming across by Evans. All ball right there. All, and as you can see, I don't know if that was an ankle or hope it's not anything bad, but uh, very clean play. Nothing uh, dirty about that. Tremendous block. What a block by that young man Jeremy Evans as they attend to Samuels on the floor and you hear the Louisville fa fans uh, booing a little bit and on the replay they saw the the contact after the block uh, as uh, he comes down but uh, again uh, outstanding job of uh, coming across from the weak side Pettigrew ro rotated over tried to take the charge Evans comes across and gets the block but a tremendous defensive play. He's that walking is, all pretty good, it, so maybe nothing serious. We certainly hope so. That is 6'9 against 6'9 on that play. Only difference is about 100 pounds there, That's Dan. the big difference. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Patino over to visit with Samardo Samuels, the All-American from high school, McDonald's All-American. Shot clock was at two. A no. wild shot that time by McGee, and Western Kentucky has it. Well, that time Evans totally altered that shot and uh, got a piece of it, too. With every second, WKU gaining confidence to see it, the way that they're playing. Well, really deliberate, trying to run that shot clock down and, and just uh, executing on every possession. Slaughter. Put back. Yes. Western Kentucky has opened up the biggest lead of the afternoon at seven. We're going to get a timeout by Coach Patino right here. Good got driven then on the baseline, and Coach P is 
pointing at him, at him as he comes off the floor. But uh, again, a second shot, second opportunity for Western Kentucky. Great pass that time by uh, Slaughter. Dump pass inside, and uh, Evans cleaned up the mess at both ends. Well, you, you know, you look at Western Kentucky coming into this game, coming off, and you talk to their program and their people saying it was a bad loss. Then you're facing number three in the country, a team that people are saying are just loaded in Louisville. And Rick Pitino and a first-year head coach trying to establish his own mark with the university and with its fans. Well, today he's starting to do it with a seven-point lead against the Cardinals and trying to pull off a monumental upset here on Fox College Sports. Well, I think they've left it on the floor, and I know Coach Ken McDonald, his staff, Coach Harper, uh, Coach Boyle, all are really proud of the effort. Uh, their inside people have really battled. They've done a tremendous job of boxing out. And this is Clark. Guarded tightly by Evans. Just over eight minutes to play. McGee strong with the shot. And again, no second chance opportunities. Western Kentucky wants to run. Into the open floor. Nine point lead what for a, the Hilltoppers. What a great pass that time by Mendez Valdez. Great catch by Pettigrew hustling, running the floor. Now they go to the All-American, Clark. He's short with the jumper, no good. Williams picked up the miss, and he's fouled. There were two Hilltoppers right there. Ball went right through their hands. Yep, <laughs> and uh, Johnny on the spot, so to speak, was Terrence Williams. And the senior heads to the line when we come back. Western Kentucky, folks, against number three in the country with 7.36 to play, and they have opened up a nine-point lead. The great pass. And the finish by Pettigrew. 49-40, the Hilltoppers trying to pull off a shocker. Back in Nashville, neutral floor for number three, Louisville, and the Hilltoppers of WKU. And it's a 49-40 lead. That's right, Western Kentucky up by nine. They have their biggest lead of the afternoon. Well, if you look at the shooting situation right here, two for 13, uh, one field goal since the 16-20 mark, but Louisville for the second half shooting two for 13, 15.4% from the field. Williams at the line. That's two field goals in almost 13 and a half minutes. First one rattles in. It's five for 10 for Terrence from the free throw line. You'll see full court pressure now by Louisville. And the senior hits them both. So here's something they have not been able to do for most of the game, set up the full court pressure. This is a run and jump situation if the ball's on the sideline. Good job of keeping it in the middle. And Pettigrew breaks it and they'll set the offense. Under seven and a half to play. Sally did a nice job there of getting the ball in the middle of the floor, which you have to do against that press. Slaughter. Now to Anthony Sally, the junior from Richmond, Virginia. This crowd on the edge of their seats. Mendez Valdez thought about the three. Instead, it goes to the baseline. Three on the shot clock. That's no good. Not a good luck for Williams and Louisville. They have it. McGee open for three. No. They are now just three for 19 behind the arc of the Cardinals today. Slaughter picks up the dribble. Pettigrew at the head of the key. Just over six and a half to play. Tough shot by Slaughter, and he's fouled. Great crossover there by A.J. Slaughter in creating his own shot uh, against an outstanding defender there, and he's going to go to the free throw line for two. Here you see the crossover right there. Outstanding crossover, shielding it with his body. Got a little hand there. So Slaughter at the line. AJ with a game high, 19 points after that make. He's three of four from the free throw line, seven for 13 from the field. And he hasn't had easy shots either. He's had to earn every one of them. Coach Louisville has shot 27% on the afternoon. That is it. Unbelievable. 
and had some good looks. Just not got the ball down. Hit them both. Lead at nine for the Hilltoppers. Every possession now becoming a little bit more important as this game goes forward. Williams wide open in the corner. Good look from Sosa. Sosa did a great job taking it to the hole, drawing a defender, and making the cross court pass. And here the you Louisville see the full, fans full on court their feet. Sally lost it, but a foul. And that will go against Louisville. Smith got him across the arm there. Uh, again, he lost control of the ball and then gets fouled uh, going for the loose ball. Lead at six with 6.09 to play. Good free throw shooter, and he'll be shooting a one and one here. That was the fifth foul, evidently. So, this in many ways, coach, as you see Jerry Smith fouls out. It serves as a timeout basically for both sides because you wait until the young man has a seat and both teams just go over to the sideline. So it's like having a timeout out there without well, spending one. Right, and the officials right on top of it there giving him the, the amount of time left. So uh, uh, Jerry Smith, no no points today uh, for Smith. Uh, two assists and, and fouls out. And he's a big key to the Louisville offense. Sosa is going to really try to, to create some shots for some people right now. Anthony Sally, the junior at the line from Richmond, Virginia. Six point lead for Ken McDonald and the Hilltoppers against number three in the country, the Cardinals of Louisville. He's a 72% free throw shooter on the season. So again, uh, you can't have a point guard that's not a good free throw shooter down the last five minutes of the game. Sally, his first free throw attempt. You see the points on the afternoon. Now is six. Lead at eight. Little 2 2 1 by Western Kentucky to take some time off the shot clock. And near steal that time. Williams kicks it out. This young man can shoot it. Boy, can he shoot it! And he buried the three. That's Will Scott, the senior from New York, with his second three of the afternoon. Mendez Valdez, under six to play. Huge possession here for Western Kentucky. And Slaughter thought about pulling the three. Under 15 on the shot clock. Slaughter hands it off to Sally. Under 10 on the shot clock. Pettigrew, good look. Got it! Great clutch shot. Good, good look by Sally, and Pettigrew's played big all day. The overplayed for the three, and Pettigrew was right there. Step right into the scene. Western in 2-3 zone now, trying to keep uh, Louisville off the free throw line. This is Clark. Not a Scott to overplay on him. They know he can shoot it. Under five to play in the ball game. To the corner it goes. Terrence Williams on the baseline. Not a Clark. The senior, no good. Picked up Great by job. Western Kentucky. Great job that time by Magley, who couldn't get the rebound of tipping it. Good presence there to tip it to his teammate. Lead at seven. And it's another huge possession for WKU. Slaughter, contact, no foul. Slaughter pulls up. No, they battle inside. Ball is loose. Pettigrew is there. Every break. That's just hustle. Uh, totally out hustling the University of Louisville on that one. And Pettigrew picks up the garbage. Nine point lead for WKU. Scott. No, too strong. And the rebound by Anthony Sally. Again, Western going to milk that shot clock with 3.56 left in the ball game. Both teams now, uh, Western's in the one and one, uh, Louisville in the double bonus. And again, WKU has been taking these possessions down under 10 for the most part. I think we've got a little mismatch here. Uh, yeah, Slaughter. With, yep, Slaughter and Scott. Here's Slaughter, six on the shot clock. Slaughter penetrating, little fadeaway. You bet! Oh, is he on fire? Another great job. Good recognition by the bench of clearing out for 
Slaughter on that mismatch and, and letting him go one on one. You've got to do that, but a great call from the bench. 11 point lead for WKU. Their fans on their feet. The Louisville fans are stunned here in Nashville. Well, great shot there. A little step back move. Uh, I think, you know, that's a good court presence for AJ, knowing that he's got a mismatch and they're really taking advantage of that. Uh, they went 1-4 flat, let him go one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, what a good shot. All right, Coach, right there. That's the WKU huddle. Take me inside that huddle, and what's Coach McDonald telling his team? Again, uh, taking care of the basketball, using the shot clock, and put it in Slaughter's hand with 10 seconds to go. But they're going to try to milk the clock each and every possession now or shoot free throws. Louisville's got to be aggressive. They've got to come full court. Uh, they've got to be man to man. So uh, again, uh, I'm sure the big thing is no turnovers that result in runouts. The other end, uh, Coach Patino is talking about steals. They've got to create possessions in the last three minutes and 26 seconds of the game with deflection, steals, uh, and get some tempo going. Paul Sanderford alongside, I'm Dan McLaughlin. We are delighted to have you with us here on Fox College Sports, FCS. And it's been all Western Kentucky here in this second half. That was that Pettigrew look that uh, they overplayed for the three, and he wound up after setting all the picks at the left elbow for an easy footer. Well, Earl Clark didn't pick that one up. Uh, and uh, again, he steps in and makes a big shot. Western man to man. It's big possession here for the Cardinals. This is Williams. Now to Edgar Sosa. Sosa on the baseline. Threw it away. That was a setup out of the timeout, a drive and kick uh, for the three. And uh, Edgar threw it, almost threw it to you, Dan. <laughs> Western Kentucky, can they hold on? They lead it 59 to 48 against number three in the country with 311 to play on Fox College Sports. WKU trying to pull off the upset with 311 to play here in Nashville, Tennessee. 59 to 48. The Hilltoppers have number three on the ropes. Well, they really do. And Louisville shooting 13 for 46 uh, in the game, 28.3%. 0 for 11 from McGee and Sosa, the two point guards. And uh, again, they're they're not going to have many days like that where they shoot the ball that poorly. But you got to give credit to WKU's defense. And shooting for threes has been a problem for Louisville today. Just five for 23. AJ Slaughter with the basketball. He has a game high 22. Two Hilltoppers in double figures, Slaughter and Pettigrew. Pettigrew with 15. Here's Sally. And a turnover. Williams, they've got numbers. So says there, Williams takes it himself and a body foul on Sally. That was a good call by uh, Mr. Higgins there. Uh, Sally flopped on that one before the contact. You see here on the replay, uh, not a good job of Sally. Turns it over at this end, and there you see him falling before, uh, before the contact, and that's usually going to get you a foul. One of the few turnovers that has resulted in resulted points for the University of Louisville. Terrence Williams, 32 minutes of play for him today. Now with 19 to lead Louisville. He also has four steals and one rebound away from a double double. 59 to 49, 10 point lead with 2:48 to play. That's short, no good. Free throw shooting, 18 for 28 for Louisville on the afternoon. And this is the second one of the one and one uh, on four straight possessions have, have kept them uh, from being able to set up their press. McGee whistled for the foul. And they have to be aggressive. Western's doing an excellent job of milking the clock. We're down to 237. We got an eight possession game left and uh, Western every time they take 25 seconds off the shot clock, uh, the set much closer to a big upset. And Sally will go to the line. Sally. Shooting 72% from the free throw line. You see the free throws so far in this half. Yeah, again, the Cardinals only have uh, four field goals the second half, so uh, free throw differential quite well, a bit. That's hard to believe. Four. Four field goals. Sally hits him. This is where you have to have, a, as you well know, you've coached so many years, you have to have number one ball handlers down the stretch if you're going to win games. And you got to have point guards 
that can shoot free throws. If you can do that, you can close games out. Well, that's how you win uh, the tough ones, and uh, you got to make free throws in the last five minutes. One of the stats I've always wanted to see was what the player shot the last five minutes of the close game, not a 20-point blowout. I thought that was always a better indication of what kind of free throw shooter they were. Williams kicks it out. And that's Clark. That's no good. It's tipped and pulled down by Samuels. Oh, oh look at that. Kept alive for Louisville. Clark goes to the right side. Three is up and buried by Knowles. Boy, that was big. That was a big three-pointer. Western had the steal, had two guys hustling. Here's the full court pressure now. Slaughter, under two minutes to play. 61-52. Sally will pull it back wisely. 25 on the shot clock, under a minute 50 to play. Louisville, the verge of being upset by Western Kentucky here on Fox College Sports. Western goes to their high five set and then a late ball screen. Mendez Valdez. And finally, it will be a timeout as both players hit the floor, but a timeout was taken, and I believe. That was Western Kentucky taking the uh, timeout. Now, well, Coach McDonald almost tackled the official on this one to get this timeout, but uh, again, Orlando uh, getting caught with the, with the dribble there, and uh, good timeout, good 30-second timeout. All right, Coach, 133 to play here, 61-52. Inside that huddle, what's Coach McDonald drawing up? Well, he's going to try to get Slaughter uh, an open shot. It wouldn't surprise me to see Louisville run two people at, uh, run a second person at A.J., make him give it up, make somebody else shoot the basketball right now. But uh, some type of play, if Louisville's pressure, uh, Louisville's going to try to get a five-second uh, violation or a steal on this out-of-bounds play. But uh, I look for Slaughter to get some screens, get the ball, and if I were Coach Patino, and I'm sure Coach Patino might do it, is run a second player at AJ. Remember, this was a team, Western Kentucky, that made it to the Sweet 16 last year. And they get it right back. Evans with it, five on the shot clock to Slaughter, three on the clock, and that will be a foul, I believe. Yes, they get the foul against Louisville with one on the shot clock. And it goes against Preston Knowles. And look at Rick Patino over there. He can't believe the call. I, I didn't know about that one myself. I thought it was a change of possession. It should have been a new shot clock. But evidently, uh, you know, on that steal, that definitely is a foul. Uh, real late whistle, though, there by the official. But uh, definitely a foul. Look at Coach Patino there. Uh, Outstanding defense for 20 or 34 seconds and then uh, get a foul with one. And Knowles is out of this game. That's the second Cardinal to foul out. Slaughter now at the line with his game high 22. Well, these two could be the dagger. Uh, gets uh, gets it, get it up to 11 points. Uh, really huge free throws. And Slaughter's been so cool all afternoon. Just uh, really, we said, going into the game he needed a big offensive game for for WKU to have a chance and he certainly had that today slaughter eyes up the second and knocks it down Western Kentucky under 90 seconds away from the upset of the year so far in college basketball Williams they've got to shoot it Clark ball movement to Sosa for three that's no good rebound Western Kentucky they knock it off the Louisville defender underneath and the Hilltoppers have it with 107 to go. What a play there by Sally. You know, rebounding the ball and having the presence on the box out to throw it off a Louisville player. Excellent job. They need a foul. Yeah, quick. Slaughter. Not Finally, bad. the foul on Scott, but they let what, six seconds off the clock go by. Yeah, that's foul immediately. And you send a guy that is red hot to the line. <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly the guy you want to foul, but uh, what a play by Sally at the other end. Western fans on their feet right now. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest, uh, possibly one of the biggest wins in Western history. Uh, they upset Kentucky. Uh, I guess in 2001. Right, at Rupp Arena. Yeah, in the first round of the Kentucky Invitational Tournament. Uh, 
but this is a top five team at a neutral site, which is huge with the committee in uh, March. Slaughter. Very cool down the stretch. He's had one miss from the free throw line, eight attempts. Yeah, it came in shooting 50%, but he's a career 76% free throw sure. shooter. Their leading scorer hits the second, oh. no. Rattles out, Clark the rebound. We 60 seconds to play. We jinxed him there a little bit. Western in zone. Three up, no good. Rebound Western Kentucky. They have to foul right away with 47.1 seconds to play. That's the ball game. Western fans on their feet and uh, Coach McDonald, Coach Harper over there working extremely hard, uh, uh, the whole staff, but they've got to take tremendous pride in the fact that they had a game plan and the kids really executed the plan. What a thrill it must be for Coach McDonald over there. Having graduated from Providence, idolizing Rick Pitino, went to his camps, and now first year as a head coach, a chance to knock him off when he's number three in the country. Unbelievable. Clark in the front court for Louisville. I'd hate to be one of those players going to practice tomorrow. Oh, you bet. That's no good. Sosa for three. That rattles out. And a foul Pettigrew. against Louisville. That's on Samuels. Pettigrew has definitely been a man inside today with uh, boxing Samuels out. Uh, a tremendous defensive effort by uh, by Pettigrew. And Magley has been key off the bench, uh, being able to spell uh, Evans. So, again, it's got to give him confidence. Coach, at what point do you say Louisville just looked past Western Kentucky or Western Kentucky just played up to the level of Louisville? Well, I think, uh, again, Louisville uh, has not played up to his potential by any stretch and maybe overlooked Western Kentucky. Uh, and then Western probably played as well as they can play today. And, uh, you know, this team is going to get a lot of confidence from this game. And they're making big free throws, big plays when they had to make it. Not turning it over, giving up second and third shots. They're going to get a huge win, probably the biggest upset in college basketball. Williams. Steps in, now Sosa to Clark for three. That's off the mark. Samuels will put it back in with an easy put back in 15.1 seconds to play. Louisville just has not shot well all afternoon. Free throws, three pointers. It doesn't matter what you want to talk about, but give Western Kentucky a lot of credit. Louisville shoots under 30% this afternoon. Well, uh, I think, uh, again, the, the start in the first half when they missed uh, were they were 0 for 7 from the three-point line. Uh, they didn't exploit Western inside early in the ball game, getting Evans and Pettigrew in foul trouble, and I think, again, it came back to haunt them. Western's been very good at changing defenses, playing some zone along with the man-to-man. -man. Uh, so, again, uh, here you see Karouche coming back in the game for Slaughter. Big hug on the bench for uh, Coach McDonald, for Mendez Valdez, and uh, A.J. Slaughter. But A.J. Slaughter, definitely the story today, along with Pettigrew. Slaughter, a junior. Mendez Valdez, the biggest win, I'm sure, in his career so far. A senior. And this will do it with just 10 seconds to play. The biggest upset so far the college basketball year. Western Kentucky beats Louisville. 68 to 54. The Hilltoppers pull off the huge upset as number three goes down. Well, again, uh, an outstanding game plan by Coach McDonald and his staff. Tremendous executions by the players. Uh, other than those two offensive rebounds at the end when Pettigrew didn't want uh, to get a foul, uh, just a tremendous effort by WKU. This will be good for U of L. U of L go back and go to work, and this team could be in the Final Four. I still think they're tremendously talented. Coach Patino, an outstanding motivator. So uh, just caught Western on a bad day. Uh, uh, again, they, I don't think they can shoot it any poorly. Ken McDonald, welcome to the big time. Hey, this is definitely big time for uh, Ken and his staff. And, and there to, to be congratulated. What a win. In convincing fashion, 68 to 54, the Hilltoppers over Louisville.